psychosis and just mental affirmations mm -hmm. in a meditative state, it, it cures itself. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what you can do to your mind. You know? well, it, it relates somehow. It relates back to like when you were talking about your yellow shirt and the, the tapes that go. Right. And are people going to like? Is somebody going to like my yellow shirt? And it's right. almost the opposite is called for, and that is just looking inward. Right. Not outward to right. like, oh, this degree or this job or this car. That is that is the sign of my value. Exactly. But but the looking inward, which right. would also be you know hypnosis, you right. know changing your mind pattern. I think that maybe maybe we spend so much time trying to control things outside of us right. or obsessing about yeah. things outside of us that we have no control. Right. Well, I, I work with some actors, you know, and, and um, if you concentrate on the process versus right. on the end result, right. you will get rid of all that internal chatter. You'll get rid of all those voices and worrying about, are they going to like me? You know, and we go through this all the time. I have a couple clients of mine. Just work on the process. You know? I mean, it's the simplest thing. It's exactly. The oldest, it's the oldest thing in the world, you know? and we're, we're still yeah. trying to learn it. It's funny because when I was in a um, medical school, I was talking to a professor that was telling me that the most successful people he knew in the field were people that just liked what they did and came in every day and did it, mm -hmm. rather than the people that said, I'm going to cure cancer, I'm going to become the next mm -hmm. neurosurgeon, or I'm going to get number one in my class because people who love what they're doing will succeed. Mm -hmm. right. If you find what you love, you will succeed. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. in the fact that you're doing something you love is mm -hmm. a success. Yeah. And usually people can see that and you get a lot done versus yeah. people that are so worried about it. Right. What, others people, you know, what other people's yeah. opinions of them and their work are. Yeah. Right, so it's about that outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what it all comes down to. I mean, we know 10% of the mind is 10%. I know, it's very yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary. <laughs> you think How what? much more? Yeah. And that's why, I mean, you've had, you've, if you look at cultures throughout the years, they all have shamans, you know, right. and they all use music to get into a trance type state. And they do these weird things that you read about, and it's like, they can't do that, you know. Things that we perceive, we believe as being impossible. Exactly, but I've actually seen um, these uh, Hindu monks walk on hot coals. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen it, mm -hmm. and it is true. You look at their feet and there's nothing, it is mind over matter. Mm -hmm. They put themselves in such a state, they get to that, that theta state, you know, uh, that delta state in your mind where it's just like your body can do anything. Well, and I think, I, I think it was in your book, of course I read a lot of books, but I, I think it was in your book that I just re-scanned last night to, to get up to date on it, was, you know, that, that even, you know, in the field, the mind research fields that, you know, we know so little about the brain. Not just that as an individual oh, yeah. we use so little, right. but that they're suddenly starting to discover really that they're, they're you know, the nature-nurture question that so little, so much more is in the nature than in the nurture. Right. That oh, yeah. so much more, and of course in the 20th century we were sort of bombarded with Freud and, you know, that was our dominant way of looking at things and now there's, so it's expanding rapidly. Right. And so I've met a lot of people on that side of the whole area. Because mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. there's sometimes tension between um, psychologists, counselors, um, psychiatrists, and more hardcore researchers. Right. Because hardcore researchers tend to really think everything's physical, but I like to keep an open mind and believe right. that there's a, a lot more to it than just the physical body. And, uh, and, yeah. and would you, like, in compliment with him, would you... I guess there was a little bit of this in the book, but not a lot. Like certain, like you were saying, certain, oh, well, for instance, I read that um, a, a magnesium deficiency um, can, cl uh, to correct that, mm -hmm. can clear up um, depression in a number of people. Not that it works for everyone right. again, but do, are you interested right. in that kind of basically vitamins, minerals, supplements, how that affects the? Uh, yeah, the I mean, I definitely do believe that um, for cases like severe depression, uh, therapy alone, like talk therapy or meditation, will not cure the problem because right. it, it is biological. And I'm sure that you probably are a great uh, proponent of exercise. Oh yeah, um, definitely. You know that yeah. can change the, the mind immediately. Yeah, I, think, I mean at the very least, go out and walk. Yeah. You know, get some fresh That's air. Great you know, I mean, we do so little of that. You know, as a society, but. Um, it can